It's time we give back. Some will see and show someone where the love's at. Even if you don't give a dime, give your heart and share your time. Help somebody else in life give back. Welcome. Hello, my name is Hosea James Gavan II, and this is an episode of Ignite and Power Transform, where we showcase urban superheroes that impact their communities. Today's guest is the owner of Hidden Gems Archery, Natasha Green. Natasha, that's a cool name. <laughs> <laughs> I always like the name Natasha. That's a real cool name. So, so Natasha, Will you tell us uh, a little bit about your Bronx story? Yes. Um, so I was born and raised in the Bronx. Mm -hmm. um, went to PS 76, went to middle school 113. Mm -hmm. And when it came time to high school, um, you know. Where's 113? Where's, where's middle school 113? Um, right up in the North Bronx okay. on Olinville. Okay. Yeah. And mm -hmm. then um, for high school, I went to D.O. Clinton High School. Clinton? So, you went to Clinton? Yes. Oh, wow. Yes. Um, the castle on the hill. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the largest, the largest alumni association in the world. Clean, yes. In the world. Yes. Yeah. We claim that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and you know, I actually was like, okay, so I went to school in the Bronx. I did everything in the Bronx. Um, you know, and for college, I ended up going to Brooklyn. Okay. But then after all my colleges... Normally Brooklyn and, and the Bronx, they don't, they don't mesh like that. They don't, you know, Brooklyn is Brooklyn and the Bronx is the Bronx. But you, you brought us together. Thank no, you for that. No, Thank I, you for that. I had to. I got a scholarship to play ball there, oh, that's so dope. that's where I was going. What kind of sport were you playing? Um, so I was playing basketball Oh, there. really? Yeah, and volleyball. Oh, wow. So you're a Division I athlete. Yes. That's fantastic. Oh. My sister played for Syracuse. Okay. Yeah, so she's a, a... Big orange. Yes, yes. <laughs> okay, so continue with your story. Um, yeah, and so I went to um, Brooklyn for mm -hmm. St. Francis, and then, you know, I went to LIU, you know, because I thought I was going to get a master's in chemistry, and I didn't. Okay, I did get the master's, but then in between, I became a teaching fellow. Right. So when you said you didn't, what, what were you referring to? So I, I didn't during the time in which people normally finish their master's. Got you. Yeah, I finished okay. it like three years ago. Okay. Um, and then I, I saw this like great sign in the, on the train one day. It's like, mm -hmm. oh, become a teaching fellow, become a teacher. Right. And so I ended up now going back to Clinton High School to become a teacher. So you actually <laughs> taught at Clinton? Yes. Oh, that's incredible. Yeah. That's good. How was that experience? Um, it had its high moments, and mm -hmm. I had a couple of low moments earlier mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. um, as a new teacher. So what were the high? Oh, God, the high moments were when, um, just recently, I mean, I had high moments when I was teaching, but just recently one of my students was just like, you know, you are my favorite freshman teacher. Really? And that's, that's amazing. <laughs> that's a great, great opportunity to hear something come back. You don't always, when you plant mm -hmm. seeds, you don't always hear the, the, the benefit of what you've done. No. So when it comes back like that, that's tremendous. Yep, and then even when I was teaching, so I was um, tasked with our mm -hmm. um, most, uh, I don't want to say interesting, because at the time they were called at-risk youth. Um, I was teaching double period of math. I hate I to say it, but <laughs> if you're a person of color, you're at risk. <laughs> All of us in, in these times, unfortunately. Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah. And um, I just really enjoy like her, having my students smile and tell jokes, and um, sometimes they dance in the hallways and they shouldn't. But it was say that again. <laughs> sometimes they dance in the hallways. Dance in the hallways. Yes. And you were with them. You was. You I mean, it was like that whole no music <laughs> thing, like no music. And I was like, okay. <laughs> but um, I, I really. They, That's like, they, cool. just, they just made me smile, like the majority, like just, yeah, I, I had a lot of fun teaching. That's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. So you transitioned from teaching to, to, to what was next? Okay, so when, as a teacher, I was big on exposing my students. Okay. I was like, you know, y'all need to do other things, you need to expose yourselves, um, learn other things. And so one of the things that um, 
interested me, I think it was my third year teaching or so, mm -hmm. I was like, okay. So give me years. Like, okay, what so, we talking about? So around 2006, 2009, okay. I was attending school at night, but I also was teaching during the day. Okay. So 2006, I started teaching. And then even around 2008, 2009, I became a dean of discipline at Clinton. Oh, okay. so you was like holding it down, like, yo, y'all better be quiet <laughs> in the hallways. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I would like to think, but I think they just looked at me like, hi, Miss Green. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, are you going to class? Yes. But, and I'm like. But it's about relationship, <laughs> you know, and, and apparently based on your spirit and your interest in the young people, they knew that you cared about they them. Did. And, so when you spoke to them, they responded, and, and that's important. It's all about relationship, really. They did. I was a dean for 10 years, so Were I know. Were you? Yes, I was. At the, at the very first school I attended as a kindergarten student in Hollis, Queens, where I'm from. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I understand the role. Okay, so you got to, okay. But it's different in high school, but, you know, I understand ultimately a disciplinarian is supposed to be, but it's mostly about relationship. That's what I say. Yeah, I love my kids. Um, and so I, I wanted to bring something new to them. So in my email, um, something came through that said, oh, it's the Equine Green Fellowship Scholarship, or do you have an idea that will ignite or you know, change the world or, or something? And I was like, well, I want to change my students' world, and I thought that was you know, good enough. It's a good start. Yeah. And so I was like, okay, so I want to bring in a non-traditional sport, right? They were playing basketball, soccer. And so I was like, okay, what if I could teach them these Olympic sports that they were never exposed to, but they could still have Olympic aspirations, right. right? They could dream big and they could go far. And so looking at the sports that were available, my first thought was equestrian. Mm -hmm. um, not because I knew how to ride a horse, but right. it was just because I thought it would be really cool to have my students ride a horse. Right. Um, but then, you know, with the hallways being the hallways, the gym being the gym, right. there's very limited ways you could get a horse going. That's true. <laughs> I'm, tr I'm trying to picture a horse in the hallway of Clinton, Clinton High School. <laughs> yeah, that probably wouldn't work out. It, it would not have worked <laughs> maybe, out. Maybe in the schoolyard, maybe. <laughs> you know, around the football but field. But don't they have, um, isn't there, uh, aren't, don't we have stables in the Bronx, in the northern Bronx, yeah. up by Van Cortlandt Park? Yeah. Yeah, so I, I, and I just recently, within the last couple of months, discovered or heard about that. Oh, did but, you? Uh, yeah, but I didn't realize that we had that here. But the Bronx is amazing, and that's just one other thing I discovered. Yeah, and just to your point, even thinking about the logistics of even mm -hmm. trying to go to Staples or just things that, you know, I, I wasn't thinking about. You know, you have to pay for the outfits, like oh, all yeah. types of oh, fees yeah. that was going to accumulate. Oh, yeah. um, and then I was just like, okay, so what can I do? And so at this moment in time, someone named Larry Brown and also Derek Davis, they started talking to me. Like, you know, Eastern Sports Development Foundation, they're giving out grants. So what uh, Larry and David, they were? Archery were, coaches. Okay. So currently Derek Davis is at Columbia. He teaches the archery um, college program there. And Larry used to be there. Okay. And so. I'm going to ask you to hold that thought. Yeah. Because we're going to have to take a break. Okay. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm your host, Larry V. Stark Jr. I'm your host, Rachel Cheeks Gavan. I'm your host, Hosea James Gavan II. I'm your host, Rebecca Gavan. Tune in to Ignite Empower Transform every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. on BronxNet. What if you could invest in the future? The future of kids. Like a stock. Not the kind of stock that's about making money, but a stock for social change. A whole new kind of investment called Better Futures. When you invest, it helps kids go to college. Believe in us. Invest in us. Watch us grow. My name is Sydney, and I'm your dividend. Hi, my name is Hosea Gavan, and welcome back to this segment of Ignite and Power Transform, and we are on set with Natasha Green, and she's telling us her fascinating story, and she kind of cut it off because we had to go into a break. Just can you finish up with your story about the archery coaches that you came in contact with and how they've impacted and helped to shape your vision in terms of what you're doing now? Um, yes. And so I reached out to them and I was asking questions and Derek and Larry said, hey, contact Eastern Sports Development Foundation, you know, because at that time I had a nonprofit. 
Mm -hmm. I, I started it a little bit after St. Francis College. What's the name of the nonprofit? Hidden Gems Inc. Okay. Yeah, I like this whole Hidden Gems idea. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> I, I, I got that. I got that. We kind of kind of rock like that too at times. Yeah. And so um, because of that, it was I was able to write for grants to start mm -hmm. up this archery program that I envisioned. Right. I did not get the Equine Green Fellowship. They said it that year they had like 3,625 really? applicants or something. Wow. Um, it was around 2010, I think I applied to 2010, 2011. So um, it was just one thing after another. So I didn't know anything about archery. I never put it in my life, <laughs> or shot in my life. And so what happened was the minute the equipment came, I was like, oh my God, like, I actually have to learn mm -hmm, <laughs> archery. Mm -hmm. Like I have to learn this wow. sport. And so I took a year or so of traveling different places to become a level three instructor. Um, you wow, know. So, you, so you get down now, you got skills? <laughs> I don't have skills, but I have the technical <laughs> expertise to make sure you have skills. Well, you know what's so funny? I'm, I'm, a, I'm a USA swimming official. Are you? I can't swim a lick. <laughs> <laughs> but like yourself, I, I could swim okay, all right? Yeah. But I, I understand the techniques and what you need to know to be able to teach or understand how to correct, mm -hmm. you know, t children who are not doing it properly. So mm -hmm. you have the technical nouns, which is which is just as valuable. Exactly. You know what Mimi comes to mind when you say that? What? It's like the lifeguards who are at the Olympic pool, and it's like the these are Olympic swimmers, right, right. and that lifeguard is there like, okay, <laughs> someone get hurt, so right, I can right, dive right, it right, in. Right, right, right. Imagine. <laughs> Imagine me trying to save one of these guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, um, I'm certified, you know, I... Um, I really wanted to make sure I learned. I went out, went out to Proline Archery. That was the first place I went to Where learn. is Proline? In Queens. Okay. Yeah, so we're a mobile archery unit, and they're actually stationary. And okay. we were mobile for a while. Can I, can, I'm from Queens, so I can I ask you what part of Queens? Because I have never heard of them. I'm um, curious. So it's around 101 Street. Um, so that's Ozone? Yes. Ozone? Yes. Ozone. Yeah. Okay. They're amazing. Ozone like, when Park. I tell you, like, mm -hmm. between Larry... Um, Derek, Proline, like, you know, individuals who are like, yeah, yeah, yeah like supporters. Right. Like, um, I, I'm very grateful for them. That's, that's so yeah. cool. That's so cool. So you started with getting it, sending out proposals, trying to get mm -hmm. funding for the program. Mm -hmm. It didn't happen. So how did you, so how did, how did you make things happen? Yeah, so I um, connected with Eastern. Um, they really liked the vision mm -hmm. because you know, it's usually a rural sport. Like, it's, it's where you have a lot of space. Right. So I was like, no, we, we want it in um, schools. We want it in cafeterias. You know, we're not going to shoot very far. Practice is going to be short. And so Easton believed in me enough that they, you know, gave some funding and some grants um, for the beginning stages. And mm -hmm. they gave me huge 122-centimeter target fate. Like, I had equipment. And so... So this was donated to your nonprofit. It was non donated to the oh, nonprofit. That's, that's awesome. And what happened over the time was Groupon came mm -hmm. and Katniss came out mm -hmm. with the Hunger Games. Oh, yeah. And so it was like people were like, oh, my God, we want to try archery. So mm. it was one of these things that, you know, you post on Groupon. A lot of people were gravitating towards. And so, you know, I talked to, um, you know, Eastern and I was like asking questions They're like, you know, you should try Groupon because it was, I wanted to give Archie for free to all the schools. Like right. this was before Katniss, before anyone knew anything about Brave and nothing was happening. Like it, it had to, it had to bring money some way. Right. And obviously I'm, you know, black, female, you know, coming, like I don't have a lot of like friends who are able to say, here's some money to right. get this going. Like right. I don't have that network. Right. Um, and so they suggested that. So I started going on Groupon, St. Francis College. Oh my God, Rob Oliva and just the St. Francis College team. They um, rented me at a real low discount their gym space to use. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't even think I would be able to like be here with you today, uh, the way I am, if they didn't help. Like I, I'm just saying, like the facility space was big. We had archery every Sunday. That's when wow. I used it. That's incredible. Um, so um, there was just some like, you know, things that ended up making me finally say, and I talked to East and I talked to some people, I actually now have a for-profit mm -hmm. because the nonprofit model was more so as what can we do at schools, this, that, and the other. Right. Um, for-profit is like, okay, make sure the service, you know, pays for itself, pays right. for the storage, pays right. for the van, right. pays for the, um, the workers, contractors. And so it's interesting, like the relationships you said earlier with my students right. of wanting to do good by them, like, right. are you okay? 
the same relationship as in, okay, I really want to bring this opportunity to students who will be like, oh, I, I will never be able to try that. Right, right, right. So where, where, are you, where are you located at this time? So we have um, a school at, oh, so we, we're mobile. Okay, so mobile, so you guys, where, wherever there's an interest, that's where we are. Yes. Got you. We're mobile. Yeah, we had a, a situation where we did have a location mm -hmm. uh, at 576 Third Avenue in Brooklyn, mm -hmm. and it was like a lost space, and you know, really try to, uh, after the Groupon phase of like, we know there's a need, Right. then it was just like, okay, let's try to get our own lost space, um, which was good to us. And then it was just like, come to realization, like the overhead and just certain things, mm -hmm. uh, it didn't resonate. Like it just wasn't gonna work, which mm -hmm. I was sad to say that, but I was like, I loved us being mobile. Right. I loved contractors saying, hey, I wanna work today, I wanna do this, how are we gonna do this? And there are other archery, stationary organizations in New York. So we have Proline Archery, we have Queens Archery, we have Gotham Archery, mm -hmm. uh, which came up a lot of, like after us, but then they had the funds necessary to ha buy a warehouse and do whatever they had to do. Right. And so I'm super happy for that because now they're doing a next level of exposure, stationary. Um, even, Metro even Metropolitan um, Rod and Gun Club, that's what I'm a member of, they have their Ride and Gun? Rod and Gun Club. Rod and Gun. Yeah, they're amazing. Like, mm -hmm. they, they allow, like, we're members there, and, like, we just support, like, our Archie community any way we can. Right. But that's what they have. Like, that's what y'all do. Like, y'all stationary, they say, what we do is we bring it out mm -hmm. to the community. Okay. You know, because it started with that, I wanted to bring it to my black and brown students no doubt. at Tewa Clinton High School. No doubt. We, right? need, we need a few more archers in, 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 the, in the boogie down. <laughs> <laughs> right? Right? Like, yeah, like yeah. just this idea that I can become an Olympian in this. And we have a couple of good ones. Like, you know, um, William Pantene, he's actually was my best friend, like, you know, um, mm -hmm. nephew so I was able to teach them and that mm -hmm. it was like this whole circle so yeah I, I'm really fortunate so William is now working with Derek and like precision archery and he's doing his thing Larry Brown has center shot archery who without Larry building some stuff for me like he taught me what it means to have okay this is how you have a crossbar this is what you get this is what this 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 so um, I'm very fortunate I'm so, very fortunate. So, Natasha, we're going to take one more break, and then we'll get into our final segment. So, we'll be right back. I already knew that I was gonna go to college, you know, from a young age. I definitely want to major in political science, become the mayor or something, make the situation better for other people. My name is Justin, and I am your dividend. This year, patriotism shouldn't just be about pride of country. It should be about love. Remember that to love America is to love all Americans, because love has no labels. Welcome back to this final segment of Ignite and Power Transform. My name is Hosea James Gavan II. I'm your host, and I'm here with Natasha Green, and she's sharing with us her fascinating story about her creation, Hidden Gems <laughs> Archery, which is, I, I'm telling you, I love your vision, and I love your spirit, and I love what you're doing, because it is so important to expose our young people mm -hmm. to as many different things as possible. I was talking to a uh, a young boy, we have a SATI program, and I was talking to this young man about the different places and some of the places you and I have talked about traveling yep. that we've been to. And I said, man, I want to see the world, man. I want to be exposed. I want to see things. I want to see different cultures. I want to learn about different things. And, and it's just so important for our young people to be exposed and to mm -hmm. see many things. So it kind of helps to shape their mind. It helps to expand their minds. And yep. so that's, that's why what you're doing is so beautiful. Natasha, can we take about 90 seconds to kind of take a look at some of your work? Sure. Can we do that? Sure. Okay. Let's take a look now. Target. Look at the target. 
What's after to look at the target? What's after look at the target? What's that called? Set your fingers on the string. Three fingers underneath, right under. Even on the no gloves, right under. Three fingers underneath. Three fingers underneath. Thumb and pinky are not a part of the shot. Set your fingers 45 degrees. The bow is tilted 45 degrees. Good job, sweetie. 45 degrees. Spread your feet. What's after set? Raise up the arm straight. Do not, do not pull it back. Three fingers underneath. Please do not hold the arrows, okay? Elbow up, look at the target. Okay, look at the target, arm straight, arm straight. Remember what I taught y'all, like I don't teach y'all for y'all to forget, I teach y'all for y'all to remember. All right, pull back to the corner of your smile. Pull, 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 touch the corner of your smile. And lower, one, one thousand, two, one thousand. Three. Oh, you're down. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. Guess what? This is your first time. This is your first time. Wow. I mean, it's, it's, it's such a beautiful thing to see our young people engaged in something like that. I mean, really. Yep. I mean, it's, it's exciting yep. and it's inspirational. What are some of the challenges that you that you face in trying to to get this off the ground? Oh my goodness! Um, to make sure I had the product market fit, mm -hmm. and I, it's just basically a terminology stating: Will people pay for this service the way that I'm offering? Right. Right. Um, and that was just a couple of lessons, like I shared with you earlier. We used the Groupon, and then we had this location, and then we tried to have our own location, right. and now we're back to like just mobile. If a mm -hmm. school has a need, they will like mm -hmm. it. How mm -hmm. can we work with you? Is it Title One? Is mm -hmm. it after school CBO helping? Mm -hmm. Is there another method that I'm mm -hmm. thinking of? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that was one of the challenges, and um, just making sure I had the right people on the team mm -hmm. because you can't just have anyone around. Good help is hard to find. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, I, I, I definitely am really glad that like, so I had like my close, so I'm the type of person that can work with their close friends. I like right. working with my friends. If oh. I'm going to be a workaholic, do you want to work with me once in a while? We're hanging out and right. That's it fun. cheers me up. That, yeah. makes it, that makes it more enjoyable. Yeah. yeah. So um, there's like three core, um, I mean, I have a lot of partners in crime, but I'm going to tell mm -hmm. you my team happened to be Q Patine, Candace Abelard, Jolene, you know, Hall, Stefan Pantene, Tyler, you know, Richard, William Cairo, and there's one other Will who left us a little bit, but and this this team trusted me. Like I'm these like, are your BFFs. These are these are your peeps. These, these are, are my your... peeps, close friends, that's like, dope. you know. Yeah, um, that's dope. And like you have to you have to have people who believe in oh, you. I understand that you completely. Know? So I, I was fortunate, and it's other people, others along the way that come, but mm -hmm. you know, I, I those stand out. And Brandon, I love my Brandon. So we have a couple who I just very grateful, and I say thank you all the time. I'm like, thank you, like thank you for. This, this is actually a crazy idea. Like if you think about it, it's a crazy idea. Oh, I think it's a, <laughs> no, I, honestly, no, no. I think it's a beautiful idea. I really, really do. I, I'm so thankful to have even come across you through, uh, through Rachel. Oh, I think Rachel you. connected us. Yeah. And uh, I just think that it's real important. Again, I can't emphasize enough how important it is to expose our young people to new things. And, and you took the, you, you had the courage, you had the heart mm -hmm. uh, to, to venture out and, and take this challenge on. And, and, and on behalf of our community, I appreciate you and, oh. and thank you for what you're doing. My pleasure. Yeah, thank you for what you're doing. So what are some of the things that, that you that you found and what are some of the exciting things that you've learned or discovered as it relates to our children relating to what you're doing? Oh my God. Um, that they never think like, oh, I don't do, like they're like, oh, I can't do that, right? But then when they do it, they're like, oh my God, I just hit the target. Right. Oh my, and I'm just like, yeah, you could do, like, it, it's like, they don't believe it could, ha they believe it could happen, right. but can it happen to me? Right. Like, can I be the person that hit that target? Right. And so, especially with our girls, like, some of them are just really sad. Like, they're, they're, the world is, like you said earlier, like, there's something going on in this world that makes people feel like they're not good enough or, or anything. And when they do archery, our girls are like, 
wow, they like, feel like they're like the she heroes. Like they right, feel right, like right. they're the ones who are gonna take right. over the Bronx. Right. Right. So well, yeah, y'all taking over the world anyway. <laughs> I'm just saying. That's what I'm saying. That, that's the truth. <laughs> but um, that's that excite like the joy it brings. Like anyone, even sometimes adults come in like, no, nah, mm -hmm. I'm not going to try that. But then their, their kids like, oh, can you try it with me? Mm -hmm. And it, it just brings these next level of relationships of awareness of, oh, I would have never thought that I would have done that. Right. You know, and then there's other relationships as in, oh, my God, I did that at camp. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay. Like, you know, you, you have people who they had the luxury of going to camp mm -hmm. and having archery. Right. Right. And so it like it connects in different ways. Right. Um, so that really makes me happy. Well, Natasha, our time has, has run out, <laughs> and I can say that I've really enjoyed this conversation, and I'm thanking you once again for sharing your experience with our audience and, and thanking you again for what you do because it's, it's such a blessing to the community, and um, you're one of the superheroes that we need to showcase. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thanks for joining us for this edition of Ignite and Power Transform. My name is Hosea James Gavan II, and remember, if it's in your heart, do your part. Today's help equals tomorrow's hope. I love our youth. Take care. See you next time. Showing down on your faces, but I know all the while it's gonna be okay. Yes, it is. Just open up your eyes. Open up your eyes. The sun is soon to shine. that jump from the ships because they knew death was better than bondage your son wants to get a cat but you're allergic maybe he could be an outdoor cat that lives in our neighbor's yard three doors down mom you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent teens in foster care will love you just the same